Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Trucking Tower podcast. I'm very excited to be do- joined today by Charlie Safro, who is the founder and president of CS Recruiting. How are you doing today, Charlie? I'm doing great, Andy. Excited to chat with you. I am as well. You know, today we're going to be talking about key trends in supply chain recruiting today. Mm-hmm. And there have been so many changes and challenges in recent years, both for employers and for employees, I feel like. And um, I was really looking forward to having you on the show with me to talk about some trends. And just to kick things off, I want to thank our sponsors, uh, True Diligence. If you'd like to reduce the time and money you spend on background checks, along with getting expertise from a company that has 30 years in the business, over 1,100 clients, they know what they're doing. Please be sure and check that out with the link below. So to give our audience a little background about you, Charlie, Can you tell us about your professional journey and what inspired you to start CS Recruiting? Sure. I'll I'll keep it high level. Um, But I am the founder and president of CS Recruiting today. We're a third-party recruiting firm. We specialize in supply chain, transportation, logistics, work all over the country. Um, But I wasn't always here. So I graduated college and actually went into the advertising field. So it was a great five-year run in Chicago working in the ad agency side of the world. It was quite the hustle. Um, My husband out of college was a freight broker. So this was in the late 90s where he had his Rolodex of carriers, his Rolodex of shippers. And um, he had the idea back, back then to put together a load board, essentially an online marketplace where shippers and carriers can connect. This is relevant because after we had our first son, I went back to my advertising job and um, just decided I wanted to work, but I didn't want to work those hours and it's kind of a thankless job. So my husband had started this technology company with his brother. They had about eight employees. I asked if I could go work for them and we agreed that I would come in and just be the catch-all, do a little marketing, do some office management. And then before I knew it, they had an opportunity to really grow and scale and needed to hire. So when they looked around at the team, I was really the one person who didn't have a defined sales job and I had some capacity. So I took on recruiting and we had some pretty lofty goals to add to the team. And I'll tell you, this was back in 2006. I taught myself how to recruit, Um, totally different world than we live in today. This was recruiting with classified ads, putting up flyers at Starbucks and in libraries, but I learned the industry. I was in an environment where people were talking to shippers and carriers. I was talking to candidates that had a background. And after about four years working for them, they sold their business. I did some freelance work for their new owners and started to realize that this is a service that this industry needs. Um, So very organically started CS Recruiting and Originally, it was Charlie Saffer recruiting. I was a a one-woman show um, servicing clients that were coming my way looking for logistics talent. And there was just an opportunity. And I'm the type of person that if I see an opportunity, I'm either going to give 110% and go full force, or I'm going to walk away so I don't fail. Um, and thankfully, I gave this gave this my all. So started CS Recruiting um, back in 2010. My first hire, ironically, was my husband. Um, he had the experience I was looking for. He was sitting out a non-compete. And then over the years, we've really had a chance to not only expand our service offering, Um, expand our network, both with candidates and hiring companies, and expand our team. So today, we're a virtual company. We've got about 45 employees. And really, we take on any permanent search that is influencing the supply chain in some way, shape, or form. So um, you name the job, you name the level. If it's supply chain related, it's probably something we know, and we have the network to support that type of search. Awesome. I love stories like that. You know, there's there were some twists and turns in there for sure. <laughs> but yeah. um, I love what you guys are doing. And uh, congratulations on where you've gone over these years. That's really, really cool. Thank so, you. you know, there's been a lot of news about the great resignation and the job market in the last few years. And according to a Far- Forbes article, In January of this year, only two four-year spans, both of the 1990s, created more jobs than the last two years total of 11.2 million. 
What are some of the things that you're saying in the last six months or so? It's been an interesting, an interesting evolution, I would say. And if you probably go back nine or 10 months, that's when the great resignation was really all the talk. Companies were losing employees. The good news was companies were learning about what it really took to retain employees. And a lot of that just goes back to, you know, human leadership and people first culture. Um, But back then there were more candidates than there were jobs. So The market has completely flipped now, and what we're seeing is the hiring companies are really in the driver's seat. Um, There are a lot of candidates that are available in the market, many of them a result of a layoff or an elimination, many of them that are just smelling a little fear in the air. They don't want to be next, and so they're starting to look. And while there are a lot of jobs, we are definitely seeing less jobs than candidates right now. So when the market becomes off balance like this, it really does affect the types of roles that companies look for. It affects the skills and the gaps that they can identify on their team. And it creates the cyclical effect where different audiences in the talent pool kind of ride the highs and lows of the wave based on how the industry is performing, specifically logistics, but then also how the economy is. Um, And obviously, you know, approaching a recession or that talk created a lot of fear, which led to the layoff, some of the skepticism. Um, But right now, I would say hiring companies very much in the driver's seat. Right. So I would imagine that it's kind of gone back and forth over the years, right? Exactly, exactly. And the easiest way to sum it up is if you think about, you know, human wants and needs, when the companies are in the driver's seat right now, they can focus on their wants and needs. They, They have the job, the candidates are looking, that means they can be pickier, they can maybe be a little more, you know, set in their ways in terms of who they're hiring, no compromise. They may be a little stingier with their offers because they know that the candidates need the job. But a year ago, it was the exact opposite, where candidates could focus on their wants. They needed a job. Sure, they needed to make money, but they really went after companies with strong cultures. They really went after flexibility. Um, And that's really where when the market shifts, the needs and the wants and really the the demand and supply shift. So it's, it's actually really interesting when you start to think about why people look for a job, what is the need, but then if they really have their choice, what do they actually want that's going to keep them there? Right, absolutely. You know, I saw years ago, the number one need as a human being is to feel appreciated, I guess, feel uh, belonging or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, I've had jobs where I felt that way and didn't feel that way over the years. But, um, you know, it's interesting to see the shifts when the market changes and the economy, you know, changes. And you you make a great point because there's a lot of a lot of psychology in it, too. You know, just Mm -hmm. really understanding what the human needs at that point in their life as it relates to their career. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, given what you've seen, what would you say are two or three of the key challenges facing candidates in the job market today, along with some tips for overcoming those. Sure. One challenge that we are consistently hearing about is the idea that when a candidate goes to apply to a job posting they see online, they're discouraged because the job maybe has been posted for 24 hours and they're already seeing five, 600 applications. Mm -hmm. So, A lot of that is a result of where these hiring companies are right now. Many of these companies pay for these job postings. They're going to keep it up year round. They're not actually aggressively hiring right now. So while it's great that they're attracting talent, they're not attracting the right talent. They're really muddying their waters when you get 600 applications overnight for a job. It's a lot harder to dig through that to find the person you're looking for um, because a lot of people are going to jump and submit their resume. So I would say that is probably one struggle that we're seeing from candidates right now. The other struggle is is probably more generalized, what I was saying before, that companies have the upper hand. And because of this, they're going to stick to what they think they want, whether it's feasible or not. Um, what does every company want right now in logistics and transportation? 
They want sales reps with no non-competes and a book of business. That really doesn't exist. So in a normal market, companies are more focused on skills and that like cultural fit, and they're willing to really flex for having the right person and soft skills. And now companies are back in the position of, we want someone from our competitor doing the same job and we're not going to settle for less. So what, what that does to the candidates is, um, you know, you have to have a very clear resume. You have to have a very clear LinkedIn profile. This is what I do. And this is where I've worked. I'm really hopeful that the skills-based hiring is going to come back. Um, but I would say that's also another tip for candidates is just managing your expectations, knowing that if you are changing jobs right now, you have a value and you should stick to it, but salaries might be a little lower. Flexibility may be offered less. The culture may not be as top-notch as you're hoping, because if you need a job, you probably need a job for the salary first. And um, it's unfortunate. We we like when the candidates are more in control because it really forces the employers to, to shape up and give the candidates what they want. Right, absolutely. You know, on the flip side, in terms of hiring companies, what are two of their key challenges and some tips for overcoming those? I'd say the key challenges with hiring companies go back to where the market was last year when they were struggling to fill jobs. So a lot of hiring companies either overhired or they hired a lot of recruiters. And that's where many of these layoffs that we've heard about have resulted from is kind of that, you know, last in first out accounting strategy where we made an offer to a recruiter, we paid them more than market value because we really needed them then and now 6 months later, we don't even have any jobs we're hiring for and we've got this recruiter and resource on our team. So, where I encourage companies to to really think about is first internal repurposing, what are the skills of these extra bodies that you hired? They're, they were hired for a reason. So how can you turn that into revenue? How can you, you know, use this slower time from a hiring standpoint to really take advantage? And the tips I would have for any company hiring, whether it's driven by leadership, recruiting HR, hiring managers, is take this opportunity to get it all in place. Think about when the market shifts again, because it will. What does your talent brand look like, which is how do people perceive your company? What are you putting out there that is attracting people to come to you and apply versus companies always going out and hunting down the right person? Think about your DEI initiatives. Are you set up to really create a safe space for minorities and, and really make those efforts to bring more minorities into the company? And then building your pipeline and just having that warm bench strength. Um, I think a lot of companies adjust to market conditions very quickly. So all of a sudden the market flipped, we're going to go and, and lay off the seven recruiters that we don't need anymore. But when that market flips again, you're going to really regret that. So my advice to companies is take advantage of your resources. Remember why you hired them. And use this downtime to just improve your, your whole recruiting strategy, messaging, and process. Right. Awesome. Great tips, no doubt. Um, you know, what are the best ways for people to get underway with CS recruiting? A lot of people don't realize that recruiting is a free service to a candidate. So want to call that out that we typically work with professionals in the industry. The searches we work on, like I said, tie back to supply chain, transportation, logistics. So anyone who is either aggressively looking for a job or maybe just starting to dip their toes, we'd love to hear from you. The easiest way to do it is to get in touch with us, one of our recruiters, go to our website, reach out to me on LinkedIn, and we'll make sure that you're set up for a conversation. If hiring companies are out there looking to hire and they don't know where to start, you know, our biggest point of difference is that we know this industry, we know the competitors, we speak their language. Um, so same process, get in touch with us and happy to talk more about what that, that market talent pool looks like um, so companies can really manage expectations if they're ready to start a search. Very good. And this last question, I ask all my guests. Sure. What would you say as a final word of advice for our friends out there listening or watching today? It's very simple and it has a huge impact. Just treat people like humans. 
And it is something that we all know, and it's the golden rule. We want to be treated the way we treat others. But in this industry, it's incredibly important. It's important for attracting talent. It's important for retaining talent. But then when you really think about the the individuals in this industry that need that human touch, the drivers on the road, treat them like a human. They are not just a CDL driver put on this earth to move freight back and forth. They are a person with emotions and decisions. And the more you can really connect with them, the better relationship you're going to have, the more business you're going to be able to do with them. So very simple, just treat people kindly and it will come back in the best way possible. That is great advice. No doubt about it. Just treat people the way that you want to be treated, right? Very simple. And, uh, And you all rise together, I feel like, you know? So that's great advice. You know, I want to thank you again for coming on with me today, Charlie. You've shared a lot of great golden nuggets here. So thanks for coming on the show. My pleasure, Andy. And that's going to do it for this episode of the Trucking Tower podcast. Thanks for listening or watching, everyone. And we will see you again soon. Take care.